pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to a brand new series of They Think It's All Over. It's been a year and to be honest when we asked David and Gary if they were up for another series they told us they were far too busy. But as luck would have it, Channel 4 nicked the cricket from the BBC and Walker's Crisps binned Gary in favour of Michael <laughs> Owen. <laughs> so, will you welcome back David Gower and Gary Lineker. We would have had a full set, but sadly Lee Hurst couldn't get parole. <laughs> In his chair this week is yet another curly-haired Arsenal fan. In Lee! Fact, it's Alan Davis. <laughs> and sitting on David's left hand is a member of France's World Cup winning side, who was born in Marseille, but now plays for Chelsea. So he's the nearest thing they have to a local boy. Frank <laughs> And with Gary and Rory as a comedian and playwright whose first play, An Evening with Gary Lineker, actually came true last time he appeared on this show. His most recent play, My Summer with Des, also came true when he donned a red wig and a dress and posed for the news of the world. <laughs> Arthur Smith. We start the new series by asking the teams to explain what lies behind a pair of goal celebrations. David, Allen and Frank, we take you back to West Ham's encounter with Southampton in September. West Ham have got plenty forward. It's Pierce with the nod down. Ian Wright! <laughs> I'm a Chelsea, so you know I don't know anything about the East of London. And, uh, or football. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Un moment. Puis je dire, uh, pour commencer, que c'est un grand honneur May I say well, you see on the show, Monsieur Leboeuf. Thank you very much. What I was saying there was, have you had any language difficulties at Chelsea? Have you taught Dennis Wise any English yet? <laughs> Frank, you know, is Leboeuf and onion, is that a new flavour of Walker's Chris? <laughs> Gary, you've lost the job. <laughs> Let it go, Lenny. You're letting yesterday's man <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, Gary, I was talking to Gary earlier on, he's very upset because one person here has got a World Cup winner's medal. Mm. Yeah. And one person here hasn't. I've got one myself, by the way, Franz Beckenbauer. I burgled him in 82. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever win the Cricket World Cup, David? I played in the World Cup. Did you ever win the Cricket World Cup? I played in the World Cup final and scored as many as Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Un moment, uh, mesdames, messieurs. <laughs> Sérieusement, uh, Franck. Oui. Franck. Franck. <laughs> je vois que tu es, uh, que tu as la tête de slap. Avez-vous essayé Ronsil quick drying wood stain? <laughs> Stain de bois qui oh, sèche oui. vite et fait exactement. Oh. Que... <laughs> could I, could I, sorry, uh, just disturb you for a moment or something? We could maybe answer one of the questions. I'm just a little bit oh, yeah. distracted because there's a bag of. I think Lee's left a load of gear behind. Has he? <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what he goes know, home on the tube mine. in. It's mine. Say, it was mine. That was a bit of a turn up. What, I wasn't was expecting <laughs> This is the weirdest one, look at that. <laughs> Come on, what about the question? What about oh, it? I thought he was staggering what? around slightly drunkenly because he's after a move to Middlesbrough and he thought he might impress Robson, who will... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nothing to do with that, it's to do with that ref. The uh, De Canio ref who got shoved up. Frank knows. I thought. In French, it's... In French, it's too late testicule. <laughs> Two pennies. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think you probably get three points for that, but no here are Ian Wright and Neil Ruddock to tell their story. It was just original stuff. Never seen it anywhere before. You just made it up. You were joking, didn't you? I thought we was taking a piss out of that ref. The, the canny I thought. Yeah, we... No? Yeah, we was, because he, he did go down like a sack of spuds. <laughs> <laughs> for it, really. It was, it was the worst style I've ever seen. 
I'm not that we condone what yeah. Di had done because it was right out of order, wasn't it? I think Hale and Pace are safe, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ian right there, seconds away from avoiding yet another FA charge, but I hope the FA won't get crossed, because it was only a bit of fun, wasn't it, lads? It was we a didn't get charged, we were a bit of fun. It was a Rory McGrath, wasn't it? It was a bit of fun. What's the bad team? Oh, Paul Alcock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the incident with Di Canio was actually the third time Paul Alcock has ended up on his back thanks to a footballer, putting him second to Danny Bear on the all-time list. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Arthur, for you, we go back to Manchester United's disastrous 5-3 win over Chelsea in the FA Cup <laughs> <laughs> earlier this year. Cole now, and we get past the bar. Sheringham and David Beckham, a tap-in in the end. So, Gary's team, why was oh. David Beckham? Qu'est-ce qu'il se passe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Andy Cole, il va par ici, il va par là. <laughs> tu, tu es là de vous comme un uh, strict long de peace paralyse. <laughs> Qu'est-ce qu'il oh, yeah. Maybe he's a hardcore folk singer. <laughs> so yeah. 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 You get four fingers in each ear. Interesting <laughs> <laughs> thing about... Um, Posh Spice and, what's he called? Beckham. Beckham, David Beckham. <laughs> Smokey been, Beckham? They've never been interviewed together, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it. No, it doesn't work. Gary's remark got it. a laugh and threw Rory slightly off his trail. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. A lot of people enjoyed that. <laughs> Posh Spice especially, I imagine. Posh Spice and David Beckham. Gary, never just, never no. interviewed together. Why? Because they only have one voice between them. I felt like that, you know. Every time I've been a little girl, I want to sing and dance. And she says similar things as well. <laughs> Come on. We know this. Yeah. They may have been making some satirical remarks about, about he, the nature he's of very his attractive. sexual relationship. They're jealous because yeah. he's so attractive. I'll give you three points for that. The answer is, indeed, that he was mocking the silence of the Chelsea fans who a moment ago had been singing a song about his fiancée, Posh Spice. But what were the Chelsea fans singing to upset him so? David Beckham, David Beckham, do you take her up the Arsenal? Do you take her up the Arsenal? So it was indeed just a polite inquiry as to whether or not David and his fiancée had ever visited Highbury together. So that's clear that one. Okay. When England were on tour in Moldova, Beckham read a book from cover to cover, the first time he'd ever done so on a foreign trip. He was so moved that he was in tears as the book reached its dramatic climax, as Jill came tumbling after. <laughs> At the end of that round, David's team have three points, and Gary's team, indeed, have three points. David? Catch. There you go, that's the last bit of cricket you'll see on the BBC this year. <laughs> the next round is Sporting Bluff, where each team member reads a statement, one of them is true and two of them are false. The other side has to decide which is the truth teller and who's about as convincing as a Paul Olcock stumble. David's team, your subject is boxing sanest ear biter, Mike Tyson. Here is Mike Tyson in training, limbering up for a date. <laughs> Mike Tyson is a breeder of pigeons. Mm -hmm. Gary? Mike Tyson is a collector of beer mats. Rory? Do you know the French for beer mat, Rory? I doubt it. <laughs> I think, in typical cowardly French way, they've chosen our word, le beer mat. <laughs> I won the World Cup. How much is three feet in metres? Like we'd give a f <laughs> Go on, Rory. Okay. Mike Tyson wants trained to be a hairdresser. Okay, so David's team. Mike Tyson fancies pigeons, collects coloured bits of cardboard, or provides the finest short back and sides this side of the Mississippi. I don't think he's not remotely interested in beer as far as I know. He likes a slow, comfortable screw against the wall whether you like it or not. That's it. <laughs> I knew we could take this programme up, market. <laughs> well, I'll try. These beer mat things, are they like sort of cheap coasters, you know, sort of stuff? Can that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it know what beer 
he's a man of the people, a man of the people. <laughs> so they're sort, of, they're sort of, sort of round things you put on the yeah. table to so soak up alcohol. That's a bit, right. like, <laughs> bit like sort of Gaza, that sort of thing. <laughs> That's for the hairdressing. I can't believe that for a second. You want Tyson holding the mirror up behind you going, do you like it? <laughs> Pigeons do also have metal tags around their ankles, so he's got that in common with him. Maybe. <laughs> Pigeon fancier, beer mac collector, barber. I think it's something to do with pigeons. They've got Pigeon. approximately the same IQ as Don Pigeon. King. Pigeon. 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 Okay, Pigeon. Let's see if you were right. <laughs> I give you three points for that. Arthur was indeed telling the truth. Mike Tyson is a pigeon fancier. In fact, he spent many years breeding pigeons. It's the only time in his life that a bird comes back willingly. <laughs> Gary's team, we hark back to that dim and distant time long, long ago when England had a popular football manager, way back in June. Here are Paul Gascoigne and Ian Walker, showing Glenn Hoddle why they deserve to be left out of his World Cup squad. Oh, look, What an easy goal. And a tough week for Walker. Real chance here for Gascoigne. They moved up and got caught. Still Gascoigne. Still Gascoigne. <laughs> I love that. It's still Gascoigne. Oh, God. <laughs> but when Glenn invited the sack players into his hotel room to be told the fateful news, he had a plan to calm their nerves. David's team, what was that plan? It was to calm his nerves of the players. Glenn Hoddle put on the CD of Ims. No, in uh, English, in English, Frank. <laughs> I don't care. Oh, I won the World Cup. That's right. <laughs> to calm the nerves of the players, Glenn Hoddle put on a CD of Kenny G. <laughs> <laughs> to calm the nerves of the players, Glenn Hoddle put on a CD of Celine Dion. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be that, can it? <laughs> <laughs> it anyway, now. So, were the soon to be discarded players relaxing to hymns, Kenny G or Celine Dion, Gary's team? Are you sure he didn't put on Come on Eileen? <laughs> Come oh, on Eileen. Do, 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 do. <laughs> How's your name in the dungarees? That'd be an away kit next year, Chelsea. <laughs> You've got, so got quite a good sort of pop history throughout something. No. 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 <laughs> they won the World Cup, so they're not yeah. too Exactly. Yeah. Interesting about the French language. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> is Go they, on. If they haven't got a word for car, they have to say voiture. <laughs> <laughs> I know oh, how to make gosh. any Frenchman laugh. Go on, then. I know how to make any Frenchman laugh. I'm going to say something to Frank, and he will, as a Frenchman, find it hilarious. If he doesn't, I give all of you a hundred pounds. <laughs> it is, doesn't sound much, but to a Frenchman, it's very amusing, because a French cock says, coquericot, but an English cock says, cock-a-doodle-doo. <laughs> it's quite a quiet laugh he's got, isn't it? <laughs> It looks a bit like a frown. <laughs> if you're in the Latin quarter saying that in French, they'd be pissing them. What about you? Which part of France have you been? I have been Albania. in France. Albania. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pitch in the scene. He's telling the players that they're going to be dropped. He's got to play something relaxed. What's he going to play? To be honest, I've never really heard of Kenny G. I mean, can you you're name lucky. a Kenny G I song? Very lucky. It's shagging music, basically, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> You shag. Well, that's not what you want before announcing the team. It's not going to be he doesn't well, want to put on shaggy music if he's got Dion Dublin in the hotel room with him, but what I've heard. <laughs> and what have you heard, Alan? I've heard that he's got an enormous snob. <laughs> Frank, out of, out of Petit and Vieira and Anelka, who's got the biggest snob? <laughs> <laughs> That's just something that a couple of girls, really friends of mine, want to know. Want to know? Yeah, write really it down on there and I'll tell her you when tell I'm tell him, but he can't speak with his mouth full. <laughs> we have to say that. <laughs> drawing of it. <laughs> From what I understand, Kenny G is sort of a bland, uninteresting kind of music. <laughs> and Glenn Hoddle, uh, you know, so I vote for Kenny G. All right. Who said Kenny G? You, David said Kenny G. And we 
you for it. Well done. So that's three points for you. David Garrett did indeed speak the truth. So let's all relax now and hear some of the smooth sounds of that mellow Kenny G sax. <laughs> David, uh, you're fired. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> it sounds like the inside of a harvester. They're all fixed. <laughs> I want to hear a word against, said against harvesters. Why well, not? I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have six, and indeed, Gary's team have six. In this next round, we play some unusual sporting footage and then ask what's going on. Gary's team, feast your eyes on this. Bringing out Rory to lunch. <laughs> I think it looked like the Queen Mother to me. <laughs> which one? <laughs> yeah. I mean, which Queen Mother? <laughs> it may, may have been the traditional parading of Gaza's liver. <laughs> <laughs> Rory McGrath, you must have some Scottish blood in you, Rory. Don't you know something about this? No, no, not at all. I was the Irish. I, I had a bit of a Frenchman in me once. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't before this show, was it? It was uh, un petit. <laughs> Do you remember when um, Des Lynham said, did yeah. someone tell you this, Frank? Des Lynham said, and there's Frank Leboeuf with his little son, Le Spare Rib. <laughs> I will ignore you. <laughs> I know, you won the bloody World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Once, you know. <laughs> you right are seeing, across the you line. are seeing on this Not program, Frank LeBeuf is turning into Alan Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I won the World Cup! <laughs> You've been relegated. I won the World Cup! <laughs> you shit! I won the World Cup! <laughs> yeah, but I won the World Cup. Yeah, I won. <laughs> well, I think they weren't Scottish. I think they were Cornish. That was a Cornish pasty, Tiddy Oggy, as they called them in Cornwall. Best ones made by the Patrice Bakery. I'll be there at Christmas there. <laughs> yes, that's three points. The answer is those are Cornish fans, and that's the giant Cornish pasty. It's a tradition dating back to 1908 that whenever Cornwall make it through to Rugby Union's County Championship final, their supporters wear kilts and tie a giant pasty to the crossbar. Not many people are aware that kilts are worn by Cornish rugby fans as well as Scots. It's nothing to do with Celtic tradition, it just makes it easier to display their arses out of the coach window. <laughs> Team. Believe it or not, this is part of a sports event. <laughs> so, what we want to know is, what sporting event was that a part of, and what did all those giants and bits of giants symbolise? One point. I don't top. actually know for sure, but I'm certain that Stuart Hall will be absolutely pissing himself. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't a, a porno festival more, I don't know. A porno festival? Yeah. yeah. Could have been. Yeah. What sort of porn are you into? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Arsenal, nous avons, Some awards. Uh, nous avons une star de porno, Emmanuel Petit. <laughs> he's quick, he's French, his name a porno flick. Yeah. Manuel, <laughs> Manuel. He's quick, he's French. Well done, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> and the French have no word for baguette. We've <laughs> got a word for stupid. Yeah. Come on, it's part of a sporting it event. Proud, what is the event? It, What's it simple? There was a big pink nose in the middle of it that I'm certain was something to do with Brian Clough. Yeah. Or Carl Malden. No. <laughs> that doesn't remind me uh, a nose, you know. Doesn't oh, yeah? It? No. What's it remind you of? And if you say to say, I, I talk about the porn, uh, porn yeah. festival. Yeah, no, I mean. porn, but I want to know if that reminds you of that. Why is the green things growing out the bottom? You've got a problem, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Frank knows this. You know this, Frank, don't you? Yeah, it was in France. It was. The last, uh, the last World Cup, you know, we, we saw the giants, you know, who yeah. represented the. Uh, all uh, continents, four continents. We had four giants. It was really boring. They were really slow. They said that the giants represented the four corners of the world, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Do you do geography in France? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you three points for that. Well done. Very, very, very good. The four giants were Poe, the Asian, Romeo, the European, Pablo, the Amerindian, 
and Moussart the African, who was trying to sell beads down the Champs Elysees when he was arrested by giant riot police and deported. <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. <laughs> and it's time now to witness a pair of blindfolded men blundering about in the dark with their arms outstretched as they attempt to identify top sporting personality in Field of Sportsmen. David and Alan, you're first, if you'd like to take your positions. You have 90 seconds to work out who has been brought before you. Or if you're Alex Ferguson, eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> Your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> no oh, point hitting Christ. him, David doesn't go down. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> um. What? Oh! Who's that? Someone hit me. Is that you? I think it's. Well, it doesn't feel like we... a very muscly arm. I think it might be a lady. <laughs> Don't I say. You're not the one. Oh! <laughs> You're not the one who felt in Barrymore, are you? You're that. But hang on. It's a female <laughs> boxer, in my estimation, and I've got Good a minute boy. and a half Good. to work out which one have I, have given up, I can't see How many face. are there? <laughs> <laughs> That's it's a great the great game, isn't it? Game. Right. So I've got boxing gloves, I've been punched in the head twice, <laughs> and now, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> You're on a There's a lot of blow! I've taken a standing eight! Oh, yeah. How many there are? There oh. aren't many around, are there? Does it rhyme with... I'm going to bite her on the ear. It does, it does. Right, rise, rise with that. Oh, couch! Yes, well done. Thank Three you. points. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Three points. Three points, excellent. Gary and Rory. Ça gaz funk. Ça va et toi? Ça fait de la santé, oui. Boring, isn't it? Be careful, you will. You got that John McEnroe from behind the crowd, did you know that? And can we have our second mystery guest, please? Your 90 seconds start now. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I'll start. Oh, hello, what's this? That's another girl box. Uh. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's, it's Fatima Whitbread. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. Oh, blimey, it's solid. <laughs> it's not Eubank, is it? <laughs> oh, no, it's not. It does If you know 10 set. seconds and not said anything, how can it be Eubank? <laughs> Middleweight, Nigel Ben. Track! Uh, oh, where is it? This is unheard of at this point in the competition. They've both got maximum points. David's team have 12 <coughs> points, and Gary's team have 12 points. We end, as always, with our ref pushing pasty tying name game. David's team go first. Could you pass those along to Alan, please, Frank? Thank <coughs> you very much. You have 90 seconds to get as many names as you can. And your time starts <coughs> now. Uh, American sprinter, long finger now is dead. <laughs> Australian cricket captain. Oh, Brandon yeah. Scott. Yeah. Uh, French porno star plays for Arsenal. <laughs> uh, hands on in the England dressing room. Eileen Burry. Yeah. Uh, referee got pushed over. Oh, oh, sorry, two Finney. Uh, Formula One driver from Finland, uh, McLaren. Uh, Mega Hackman. Uh, English amateur who turned pro playing golf. 
David oh, Gales. Rose. Yeah, Rose. that's it, yeah. Um, He's a difficult one. French player, played in the Stop World Cup with again. a girl's name. <laughs> played right back, brilliant. Plays for Palmer. Ah, uh, Lilian Turan. Mm. Uh, Chicago okay. Bulls, uh, basketball star, Nike. Uh, Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cricket umpire. Um, his surname is Rhymes Lamp Cigarettes. Has given David out almost certainly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a sprinter who I've never heard of, so you probably won't either. But he's got two syllables in his first name. First one's on the end of your foot. Toe? Yeah. Imagine the name that began with toe. Toe rag. Toe rag, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pres you know, things you buy come in a. Who was it? Toby Box. Well, I'm sorry, Toby Box, but I haven't yet heard of you. <laughs> so, well done, David's That's team move on to 22, good. which means oh, Gary's team, you need oh, 10 Gary's to draw level and 11 to win. Yeah, Pass those down to Rory, please. Gary's Arthur. whinging already because he thought those were far too easy. Oh, he's always whinging. Right. You know what he's like. OK, fourth or fifth of 10 to draw, 11 to win. Rory, 90 seconds, start now, go. Brazilian player didn't play in the final. Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yeah, Ronaldo. <laughs> English, England's be best tennis player is still crap. Cliff Richard. <laughs> Tim Henman. Correct. <laughs> uh, Liverpool striker advertises crisps rather well, I think. My <laughs> he won't sell as many crisps as I did. <laughs> you, don't, you don't sell any crisps anymore, <laughs> uh, Australian tennis player um, on the roof, big thing. Pat Rafter. Yes. Um, Ear missing, not Van Gogh, uh, boxer. Tyson, Mike Tyson. Not Mike Tyson. He's got a big ear off. Um, Allcock falls over, pushed by... Di Canio. Paolo. Uh, this is, I don't know who this De is. Canio Canio Paolo. Paolo. This is someone <laughs> whose first name is, you know, what you smell. Oh, smell, it. smell, smell. Odor. No, no. Abbreviation. Smurfs. Body odor. Theo. Yeah. Bo uh, and what do you have at uh, McDonald's? Nothing. Second name Brooking. Trevor Brooking. No, yeah. So, Trevor. Second, second name Wimbledon. Jack. Wimbledon. Little fairy creatures. Don. Trevor Don. Fairy creatures. Wumble. Trevor Wumble. Um, <laughs> first name. First name. Uh, Irish for John. Sean. Correct. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's got a Scottish, Scottish surname. What a Scottish surname Muck. to begin with. Muck. Muck. Yeah, Muck. and when you go skimming along... <laughs> Muck skimming! Muck skimming, yeah, very good. Uh, oh, my <laughs> word! <laughs> yes, good one. I'm glad that wasn't a tie, because that was a very dubious one at the end. But, in fact, Gary's team have 21, but this week's winners no. with 22 <laughs> are David's team. <laughs> Close. So our thanks to Gary, Rory and Arthur, David, Alan and Frank. We're all off to take Posh Spice up the arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. <laughs> Stay with us here on BBC One. Les Ferdinand, Phil Tufnell and Jana Novotner are on side with John Inverdale. Next. 